everybody it is christian buckley doing another mvp buzz chat i'm talking today with bjorn hello hello nice to see you good so, to be here it's great to see you too and I, I love the background uh so for folks that don't know you who are you where are you currently and figuratively <laughs> and uh and what do you do yeah uh, hi my name is bjorn uh i well, most of the time I, I spend next to my computer, but as of exactly right now, I am in the middle of the forest walking my dog. So I, I live a bit outside of Stockholm, Sweden, uh, right next door to a big old forest and absolutely love it. Um, That's very, very nice. When I don't do that, I, like I said, spend my days to, next to my computer uh, doing consultancy for a company called Advania, where I sort of do devopsy stuff I, I i i often say that i'm one of the like two people in the world who actually enjoys writing yaml um <laughs> yeah which yeah so so yeah i i spend most of my days doing that and kind of realized that i really enjoyed it and like to talk about it as well and and here we are <laughs> no it's very cool well I, i'm glad that you joined joined the series and uh, it's you know, I loved getting to know other MVPs and uh, especially I admire the opportunity to get out into nature as well. I, I'm trying to do that now that weather is finally warming back up and uh, going yes. on longer and longer walks uh, with my dog as well. So, well, that's, that's awesome. Well, so uh, your, your focus, your, your MVP is in developer technologies and you, you kind of mentioned, I like the way you described it, DevOpsy. I like that's yeah. a <laughs> I because yeah, I always I, liked uh, some of the for, for folks that aren't familiar with what happens within each of the MVP categories, it's always interesting to to find out like what specifically people focus on. So kind of what are the core things that you write about, talk about, speak about? Um yeah, so 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 like you said, I, I'm in the, the developer technologies uh category, which well, I, I guess it means most of, when I've been looking through most of the, the colleagues I have there, they're mostly developers. Now, I am absolutely not a developer. I, I, I just sort of, well, I, I started doing PowerShell many, many years ago with like PowerShell version one. And, and then I, I joined a company that uh, needed a PowerShell developer. Uh, they had a product that ran like 50% PowerShell. And they needed a PowerShell person. So I started working with the developers there and ended up sort of owning the release processes and, and, and like everything around that. So, so I'm still not, I mean, I, I kind of learned to read a bit of C Sharp and I've written my fair share of JavaScript, although I don't like it. Hmm. But I, I'm definitely not a developer in that uh, sense, but I, I am the ops half of, of that sort of DevOps uh, life cycle thing i actually mm -hmm. I, I really liked I, I found myself really enjoying you know finding what people do finding out what they do and how i can uh, improve their life not just uh, doing my own stuff but actually finding out where stuff fits together and how we can tie everyone in the entire department together so so when you know when the devops movement sort of started i, I was right into it I, I immediately fell in love with it um, unfortunately, we ended up with a movement that kind of a lot just meant that people throw admin rights to developers, uh, which is sort of where I come in. Then, like, it, you need some some knowledge of the ops half as well. Right. It's that's how it is. But yeah, so so that's sort of how I ended up where I am today. Uh, so I mostly work with development teams. But like I said, I do not consider myself a developer by that means, by yeah. those means. Well, it, I, you know, my, my experience uh, going back into the 90s with um, what is now the DevOps space, I, was that was certainly true. Most of the people that I worked with, and I worked in that space as well um, in the late 90s, early 2000s with actually management of the code in the process, the, the code review process and kind of everything on the back end. So it was in support of the engineering teams, in support of the developers, 
but it was making sure that, hey, there's things that are checked in, checked out. Here's what's happening. Working with product management on what was developed there. And then all the other like project management tools and other kind of information management systems around engineering. That was my entry into, I'm in the collaboration technology space, but that's where I came from. I came through, again, it wasn't called DevOps in, in 2002. You know, it's a newer label, but it's yeah. that same world that we would refer to it as, you know, SCM, uh, software code management, um, software configuration management. Um, but it was all within that operations. And so a lot of the people that were DevOps, they came up through like more of the desktop support ranks. They were that kind of networking people and, uh, you know, loading laptops or preparing desktop PCs for new employees and then just kind of yeah. took over those tools. Yeah. And then, then that's kind of also the same I did. I, I like I said, I worked in, in, I mean, I started in ops, normal ops teams, uh, probably the same journey like most people in my, in, in our position is, um, I think it's well like 25 odd years ago, I started in mm -hmm. like first line and then second line and then third line and ended up doing server management and then, you know, going on from there. Yep. And I think that that absolutely helps, uh, you know. Right now, uh, my, my current company, we focus mostly on Azure stuff. So, so it's uh, like enterprise scale deployments. Although I am not really, I, I'm not the architect. I don't design that stuff. I just implement it. Mm -hmm. um, but, but having a background in ops and actually knowing what hardware uh, is and how it works and how networks behave and you know, ha having that background actually makes it a lot easier to understand everything and, and helping out development teams to know what they need, you know, because it's, it's, it's a skill that many developers lack, even yeah. though they get their admin rights, it's, they still have to know what they need. Right. So, yeah, well, I, I really enjoy it. it. Well, again, it's one of those things where I mean, you can go read a lot of things, but usually when you're learning technical skills, you're learning about a, a, a language or a platform or a, a specific technology. And a lot of what you're talking about, it just, it's, it, it almost, it's, it, that comes through experience. I mean, most, most of the people, uh, I mean, again, I go back to like why some of the people, I think some of the best in that space in the DevOps space came up through that, you know, a, a couple of my friends that are in that space, one who's a VP now at a major public company but uh, was a music major and, and started doing desktop support and building, helping build out network, you know, pulling cables back in the day, you know, but, but, you know, when everything was on-prem and wired um, but just learning, re building, you know, machines, building workstations for people and kind of learning from the ground up about all of those things. And then ending up owning all of the management, the operations, the permissions management of all the various systems, making sure that they were integrated, working together again, that, that a lot of it's, it's harder, I think, to get that experience just out of school. I mean, generally there's, there's not classes around that per se. It's more of, you know, through osmosis over time of having experience in each of those areas. Experience is hard to get, but very important naturally. Like, doesn't matter how well you learn. I, I, I do some some training as well. And I've had, uh, I don't know the English word, people from school coming up and doing their sort of practicing work yeah. with me. So, so I've had like uh, people working next to me for, for a couple of months. And it's always interesting because I, I always find that they are actually really, really good in, in many places. In many things, they are way ahead of me knowledge-wise. But just sort of having that experience of how to handle people and how to understand the processes around this is that's something. Yeah, like you said, it's just experience. That's what it yeah. is. But I, look, I, for for being, I, I'm self-taught on a lot of technology, um, but uh, yeah, you know, I've always been of the belief that uh, you know, you find people that uh, you know self-teach. They're they're passionate about something. They go and learn. Like we can go learn new tools, new technology. We could go and do that formal education, but the wisdom that comes through experience, like you, you, yeah. you can't go add that in a, in a, in a, you know, semester class, you know, it, it's, yeah. it just takes time. Well, Bjorn, I, I'm, I'm interested to know, like, uh, you know, what was your path to becoming an MVP? Like, how did you hear about get into the program? Um, yeah. So, so, 
I I think I first sort of heard about the MVP program. I mean, that must have been 10, 12 years ago, something. It was actually, I, I used to work at a, a university. Uh, it was really, really fun. And really, well, speaking of learning and technology, they're like, you know, I worked with people who helped invent stuff like Kerberos, which is kind of cool. You learn quite a lot from those people. But I, I learned about the MVP program uh, from, from the local user group that I started joining into, the PowerShell user group. Um, and we have uh, one of the MVPs there, Simon Wolin. That sort of, uh, yeah, I sort of just heard what it was. Um, now, I never imagined I would actually join it, but it was like, I just had a discussion with someone from work and was like, yeah, you know, it would be cool to sort of reach something like that. Instead of just being one who uses tools or follows people, just being one of those in the front. Uh, I always enjoyed doing stage work. I mean, I'm, I'm a musician since birth or ah, since yeah. I was really big and I always yeah. loved being on stage. So that part. Um, so I started sort of doing smaller presentations and, and stuff like that. Started writing, blogging, whatever, tried all kinds of stuff. Uh, changed work to that development place, uh, mostly because I felt like I needed a place where management actually bought into doing all of this as well. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't know. I sort of just went from there. I, I never really imagined being an MVP. I just tried to be like the MVPs I know, like yeah. the people I wanted to, like, like my heroes. And I tried to, do, you know, be open and humble about what I learned and, and learn more. And, you know, and eventually I just ended up sort of where I am today. I, I started joining bigger conferences, not more than a couple of years ago as a speaker. Mm -hmm. um, took quite a bit of courage to work up to, to doing those. Hmm. And well, well, on it, but uh, well, so do you get nervous up on stage in front of a big, is that, is that something that, or, or did your yeah. uh, music background kind of, cause I, so I was the, uh, I was the lead singer of a, a, a rock band many years ago. I was always tell people that it's like, you know, you seem very calm up on stage. I'm like, yeah, actually I just kind of, I, I got over I, it being in a band. I always say, I, I usually say that, that you know, musicians and stage people, we're everyone up there has a sort of split personality because you sort of get dressed into another person. I'm not the same person sitting at home as I am on stage. And it takes, you know, everyone has their warm up sort of set up, like how do you behave before and everything. And, I, you know, it, it took some time to, to learn this. What is my way of warming up? I kind of realized, you know, many people, they, they just go up and they do their thing. I, I realized that one of the most important things for me is the like 15 minute turnover before. So I always sort of go up on stage. You know, when you have a turnover, you switch scenes, switch stages yeah. with the one before. Yep. I always go up on stage and, and sort of start to greet and, and talk to the people joining in and the people coming in. And, and I always do this. And that's part of my sort of getting dressed into that stage personality. Yeah. Of getting down to instead of me on stage versus them looking at me, it's just us talking suddenly and it yeah. gets way easier. Yeah. But, but the sort of big hurdle to work over for me was actually just sending in replies to call papers or like suggestions because I mean, the, 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 the big, the biggest conference, the, the big conference for me, the one that I've been, I've been doing the PSConf EU since, since it started. Mm -hmm. and most of my community heroes speak there and they're like the with you know finding a topic that's that the inventors are there like what can i do i, I know <laughs> nothing next to these people yeah so it, it took a bit of courage to just get over the hurdle of sending it in but once there it was just an amazing time and i, I don't have any trouble going on stage i think i think i find it kind of easy actually it's just that you need the sort of yeah the warm up and the setup before it. I I agree. That's that's kind of my technique as well. Is because you have conversations, you you know you, you're humanizing yourself to the audience as well. But it's also a great opportunity to uh, to ask people like, hey, what they're interested in, like what kind of qu what questions they might have, and whether you're going to cover that material or not. And because uh, I, I think it's a great way. Again, if it's if, if there's that artificial wall of you versus the audience that's out there, then 
in some ways you, they're going to feel, you're going to feel like you're just kind of talking over their heads, presenting over their heads. And, um, yeah. you know, and, and it's, yeah, I, I, I don't enjoy that kind of stuff. I love it when it's a more of a conversation where there's in that interaction. Yeah. But, but the sort of road to MVP, it was like the biggest changes was when I stopped caring actually. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, so, so I, like I said, I started blogging. I don't know how many years I've been writing different blogs right now. Um, and I always, you know, spend some time setting it up, doing like all these, you know, so you can send your post, your messages to it. And you had all kinds of fancy stuff on this. But I just ended up spending more time actually creating the blog than writing on it. And, and I, you know, was so nervous about writing anything. It's like, so, so eventually I just, you know, I took the, simplest and most ugliest static page generator is basically just one java uh, javascript file that just m renders markdown it's nothing fancy i don't and i removed everything from it so i have no like no cookies no reply functionality no nothing i just write and i ended up like writing so much more because i stopped caring about you know i don't even care that if anyone reads it i do it because i enjoy it yeah which made it so much more easy and I, yeah. I think it sort of was that hurdle to get over. Like, um, and yeah. so, so, I mean, like I said, I, I of course, I, I wanted to be an MVP. I never just, never really expected it until, uh, well, it was uh, at a party some, a um, couple of months ago, like uh, beginning of the year, uh, when someone asked, like, aren't you supposed to be an MVP by now? And I'm like, yeah, but someone has to send in a recommendation, hint, hint. Yeah, and like a week later, it's like I sent it in. Okay, here we go, and yeah, the rest. That's is where good. we are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I like your uh, your perspective on it. So, so my my philosophy is the exact same thing. It's like whether like I'll 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 write articles, I'll uh, do blog posts that you know may, maybe a dozen people read, and others where which I, like I wrote um, an article in. See, it's almost, almost three years now ago, and it still is in the top five every month on my blog. It's just been amazing uh, on that. And it, it, and I've thought about going and looking at all the SEO and finding target, you know, content that would align with what those most successful and write more about that. But uh, I, that's not why I write. Uh, it, it's, it's it's more about you know sharing what I'm learning and the journey, the things that I'm thinking about in my mind. And if some of them catch, great. If others yeah. don't, I'm okay with that too. And 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 that's sort of where I well, most of the stuff I write is just you know like I said I do consultancy and, and sort of the reason I ended up in in this category is probably because I spend most of my days in Azure DevOps or uh, to a somewhat lesser somewhat lesser extent GitHub. So yeah. most of the stuff I write is how to deploy stuff. Yeah. Um, and it's just, you know, I find this cool. Uh, I did something that I found interesting, so I need to write it down before I forget it. Or it, it's just stuff that I sort of go think about and wonder, can I do this? Is yeah. this doable? And I, you know, try it out. And that's what I write about mostly. No, oh, well, that, I think that, again, that's the, that's the best kind of, of content. I, I, I was just, uh, I'm a, a part of a, uh, a, a group, um, a, a cohort where we advise people that want to become MVPs and RDs. Um, and we just had our monthly call this morning and we, we mm -hmm. talked about that. I, I say this all the time. It's about, you know, finding, you know, one developing like personal habits, the things that you enjoy doing. If you don't enjoy writing, but you love doing video content, well, then don't waste your time writing, create video content. If if you're more about, you know, uh, um, you want to be in the background, but answer questions up on uh, uh, various discussion boards, it's like, well, then do that, focus on that. But if you find yourself struggling, sharing information and creating content, then this is not the path for you. You know, it, it, it does come with, involvement in the community you know finding your niche finding your voice and uh and making it you know just your uh, uh yeah your hobby and I, I think that's also the key of key to it all is is your like find what you enjoy doing 
yeah. because he, he, I, 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 like, like I said, it wasn't until I stopped caring about what everyone else thought, what I was supposed to do, that I actually sort of just started doing stuff because, again, yeah. find what you enjoy doing. And yeah. I, I, I think the whole MVP, I mean, uh, it's amazing, it's fantastic, and I really, mm-hmm. I'm really, really super happy. But it was so unexpected because I, like I said, there was some 10, 12 years ago since I sort of started thinking that maybe eventually, but, you know, it was always just, you know, yeah, sure. Eventually, sometime, maybe I will do that. Yeah. And then it just happened because I sort of did what I wanted. Yep. I, it just brought also, up an, an image I, like of, uh, you know, Luke Skywalker turning off the machine and, and just, you know, <laughs> Letting the force guide him and then blow stuff up. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Well, so, Bjorn, really appreciate your time and you know, great to to meet you virtually on this. For for folks that want to find out more about you or reach out and connect with you, where where are you most active? How can they best find you? Um. So so currently, I'm mostly on Mastodon. Um, Mastodon dot nu n u slash Bjornpen. But generally, Bjompen everywhere. So on GitHub, on whatever. Uh, my uh, Twitter account has been more or less inactive since a while back. It's still there, but and, and it, I do reply to private messages, nothing more. Uh, otherwise, there we have Bjompen.com uh, and we have GitHub.com slash Bjompen and so on and so forth. Of course, we'll have all those links so you can find it out on the blog post out at buckleplanet.com as well as out on YouTube. And uh, so we'll make sure that uh, link, and I think I've got your Mastodon on the uh, on the artwork on the, the, the front of it as well, all ready to go. And, so. and of course, all of them are on my MVP profile, which of, was of updated course. right away. <laughs> yes, excellent. Um, no, in fact, hey, by the way, so it looks like a number of those, those are all private still. You need to go make those public. So that I think you've got yeah. those turned Microsoft only. Oh. Yeah, so you go okay. m- update your profile with that. Good point, good point. That's a good reminder yeah, for I, any I, new I, MVPs. I, yeah. You gotta, still learning. Yeah, yeah you got to make sure, like, you add all that stuff in. You got to make sure that you make it visible to everyone, not just Microsoft. So, so good excellent. Point, well, point. Bjorn, really, thanks for your time. Enjoy the rest of your evening walk, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you, and yeah.